The information in this video regarding the right of betrothal first appeared in Father Philip T. Weller's translation of the rite, which appeared in his book, The Roman Ritual, Volume 3, The Blessings. It's still in print and available on Amazon. The text was reprinted in the University of Notre Dame's Religious Bulletin on March 9th of 1951, and that's where I read about the rite. Before the Second Vatican Council, there was no single required text for the rite of betrothal. However, the text of the rite of betrothal, as found in Father Weller's English translation, was the most commonly used version of the rite. Father Matthew Smith wrote in the Denver Register, The Catholic Church has a formal method of betrothing couples, although it is rarely used in this country. Her children are free to use it or not as they wish. Only when this formal method is used does church law officially recognize a betrothal. When a Christian man and woman intend to pledge themselves to marriage, it is praiseworthy and in accord with ancient ecclesiastical custom to have the engagement solemnized and blessed by the church. As noted, there is no prescribed ritual for betrothal. However, it is most fitting that the ceremony take place before the altar of God and that it is followed by the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice together with the reception of Holy Communion. The rite begins with a priest and the altar boys awaiting the couple at the communion rail. At hand are holy water and the altar missal. The man and woman would come forward, along with two witnesses that they chose, and Psalm 126 is chanted. The priest would then address them. Beloved of Christ, it is in the dispensation of divine providence that you are called to the holy vocation of marriage. For this reason you present yourselves today before Christ and his church before a sacred minister and the devout people of God, to ratify in solemn manner the engagement bespoken between you. At the same time, you entreat the blessing of the Church upon your proposal, as well as the earnest supplication of the faithful here present. You fully realize that what has been inspired and guided by the will of your Heavenly Father requires equally His grace to be brought to a happy fulfillment we are confident that you have given serious and prayerful deliberation to your pledge of wedlock. Moreover, that you have sought counsel from the superiors whom God has placed over you. In the time that intervenes, you will prepare for the sacrament of matrimony by a period of virtuous courtship, so that when the happy and blessed day arrives for you to give yourselves irrevocably to each other, you will have laid a sound spiritual foundation for long years of godly prosperity on earth and eventual blessedness together in the life to come. May the union you propose one day to consummate as man and wife be found worthy to be in all truth a sacramental image and reality of the union of Christ and his beloved bride, the Church. This grant, thou who livest and reignest, God, forever and ever. Amen. The priest would then bid the couple, kneeling at the altar rail, to join hands, while they repeat after him the following, In the name of our Lord, I promise that I will one day take thee as my wife, according to the ordinance of God and Holy Church. I will love thee, even as myself. I will keep faith and loyalty to thee, and so, in thy necessities, aid and comfort thee, which things and all that a man ought to do unto his espoused, I promise to do unto thee, and to keep by the faith that is in me. In the name of our Lord, I, in the form and manner wherein thou hast promised thyself unto me, do declare and affirm that I will one day bind and oblige myself unto thee, and will take thee as my husband. And all that thou hast pledged unto me, I promise to do and keep unto thee, by the faith that is in me. Then the priest takes the two ends of his stole and in the form of a cross places them over the clasped hands of the couple. Holding the stole in place with his left hand, he says, I bear witness of your solemn proposal, and I declare you betrothed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And as he pronounces those last words, he sprinkles them with holy water in the form of a cross. And then he blesses the engagement ring. And then he says this prayer, O God Almighty, Creator, and Preserver of the human race, and the Giver of everlasting salvation, Deign to allow the Holy Ghost, the Consoler, to come with his blessing upon this ring. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The ring is sprinkled with holy water. 
The man takes the ring and places it on the index finger, the left hand of the woman, saying, In the name of the Father, and then on the middle finger, adding, And of the Son. Finally, and leaving it on the ring finger, he concludes, And of the Holy Ghost. The priest opens the missal at the beginning of the canon and presents the page imprinted with the crucifixion to be kissed first by the man and then by the woman. If Mass does not follow, or even if the Mass does follow, the priest may read passages from sacred scripture. Lastly, the priest extends his hands over the heads of the couple and says, May God bless your bodies and your souls. May he shed his blessing upon you as he blessed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May the hand of the Lord be upon you. He sent his holy angel to guard you all the days of your life. Amen. Go in peace. And before leaving the church, the betrothed couple, as well as the witnesses, will affix their signatures to the document previously prepared for this purpose. A form of the document is as follows, though there are others. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, before the Almighty God and before Holy Church, and her faithful here assembled. We, the undersigned, have this day promised the eventual consecration of one to the other in the sacrament of matrimony, which, which is none other than the mystery of the great sacrament, Christ and his beloved spouse, the Church. May the Divine Spirit, with his grace and manifold gifts, enlighten our minds and move our wills to spend the days of our engagement soberly, piously, and justly, awaiting the blessed consummation of that union to which we have been called, and to which we are solemnly pledged. In thee, O Lord, do we put our trust. Let us never more be confounded. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And also, please pray for the church. Loving you well